I'm Jacob Halbrun, the editor of The National Interest, and I'm pleased to welcome you to a new episode of our podcast, In the National Interest. And today, my guest is Kurt Mills, the editor of The American Conservative and a former writer and reporter for TNI itself. Kurt, Washington is buzzing today. I'd like to ask you first about what your take is on the Supreme Court's decision to take up the Trump immunity case on April 22nd. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I would say that people's eyes are kind of glazing over on all these legal details. The country is sort of swiftly becoming Brazil or Israel, where the leading political figures are just constantly in legal farrago. And so I, I don't know how much attention this actually will get until the actual proceedings and any kind of court decision. Obviously, Trump has employed a legal strategy that has been counseled against by the conservative old guard, which is essentially um, a maximalist claim uh, that was sort of built on by the both the Nixon and Bush White Houses that the president has this huge birth for presidential immunity and, and discretion on, on a whole range of matters. And this is sort of the, the, the logical endpoint of that kind of calculus. Kurt, what about Trump's legal predicament in New York, where he is facing a difficulty in coming up with the 500 or so million bond? What is your take on that episode? Do you think Trump is in fiscal or pecuniary difficulties? Well, I mean, I think Trump's finances have always been super tied to his business and that he's always been not the most liquid. Uh, so he's got a real estate empire. And I, I don't think this is particularly new. I do think the the $500 million tag uh, in, in, to, in, in Toto now um, is is quite high. But I, I, I don't know. I, I tend to always sort of shade uh, or fade uh, these concerns. I, I, Trump usually figures a way around it. Is Trump consolidating his control over the Republican Party now, particularly with the resignation of Mitch McConnell as the leader of the of the Senate Republicans? Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, I think what, what is unusual about Trump is his age and his age combined with his political views. So, so much of uh, Trump's opponents are actually of, of his generation, this sort of baby boomer old guard uh, that effectively thinks the country was run very well the last 50 years, uh, that, that thinks uh, that George W. Bush might have been a misguided man, but, but a good man, uh, that the Reagan uh, revolution was without um, imperfection. Uh, Trump obviously has a darker view. Um, he hearkens back more to Richard Nixon. Uh, he uh, is more critical of the American status quo. And I think that that's reflective in it. And I think what's what's so curious is is not uh, that people like McConnell are finally leaving the stage, although I, I, I caveat, he's not officially leaving until 2027. I think what is not so amazing that is that he's leaving is that he's stuck around this long. What do you think about liberal apprehensions that Trump is not simply a new Nixon, as you state, but someone much darker, someone out of the 1930s, closer, many, some on the left, you know, are explicitly calling him a fascist. Do you think that uh, those fears are merited or are they overblown? I think they're overblown. I mean, I think that this is this is a great media cycle. It's fun to run political magazines as we do, um, but I think we, we've we've seen what Trump as president looks like, which is you know from January 2017 to March 2020, he certainly had a personnel carousel. He certainly had a, a uh, an unorthodox approach to a number of man uh, of issues, but effectively the country's unemployment was you know two percent, inflation was two percent, um, and it, it was not a dictatorship. So uh, it belongs all history to argue suddenly that he has, uh, you know, the ambition, let alone the capability of being a Mussolini or a or an Adolf Hitler. I think I think it's just it's just not it's not his interest. And I think it's also it, it underrates something about uh, Trump, which is that he is a pragmatic person who fundamentally wants to be uh, liked. This is somebody who has spent his career as a as a sort of celebrity New York centrist. The idea that he was marinating in in this sort of radical pamphleteer class, I think, is 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 a joke. What about his meeting next week with uh, Viktor Orban at Mar-a-Lago? That that doesn't fortify concerns about Trump's intentions about constructing an illiberal democracy in America. 
Well, I, I think it's very critical to <laughs> definitions matter. So, I mean, even if you if you concede that Hungary is running an illiberal democracy, which I believe is somewhat self-declared, it's still a democracy. And what does liberal mean? If liberal means deviating from uh, the sort of corporate globalist status quo, to use a crude term, uh, then sure, Trump is is moving us towards illiberalism. Uh, but if this is liberalism, it's very unpopular. The country's mood is extremely dour. Country, a super majority of Americans thinks we're going the wrong direction. The, and it's not like Trump started this fire. He's merely responding to it. Well, that's a key question right there. So you don't see Trump as you see him more as an expression of angst in the United States rather than a fomenter of it. Yeah, I think it's I mean, it's just fundamentally what separates, uh, I think, political analysts of the situation. Do you think that the country was in great shape in the spring of 2015 and then guys like Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders through sheer force of will and cult of personality ruined everything? Or do you think things were actually quite rotten and these figures emerged? And I would submit that both gentlemen are not without considerable talents, but the structural uh, characteristics were there from the beginning. Trump said a few weeks ago that if NATO allies didn't invest more, he would tell Putin to do it, quote, whatever the hell he want, the Russians, whatever the hell they want to NATO members. Do you view that as uh, a serious threat or just more bombast from Trump? I think it's a lot of bombast, but I think the reality is that the, the treaties have consequences and the failures to lead uh, to live up to the treaties also matter. Uh, if you have Article 5 protection effectively by the United States, let's be clear, this is not really a NATO protection of, of these countries. It's a U.S. protection for it to have any real teeth. There's costs for free riding. Well, when Trump says that he could solve the Ukraine crisis in 24 hours, does that mean serving up Ukraine on a silver platter to the Kremlin? I, I think, again, we should, we have what he was like as president, which is this is a president who was objectively on policy, probably more hawkish than his predecessor, Barack Obama, on Russia. Uh, Trump gave the Ukrainians jabs. You, Obama did not. Um, so I think it's just, again, you can make these arguments, you can say things, but it belies recorded history. Additionally, I think uh, what Trump is getting at there, not to get into his head, I can't and nobody can. Um, but what I, what I would suspect is that he is not he is arguing that he is not being given enough credit for his sort of personalistic approach to foreign affairs, which I think worked a lot more than the foreign policy clarity thought it was going to. Like, see North Korea, see our, see even even uh, in the Middle East, the Abraham Accords. Final query: Since you're friendly with Matt Gates, where do you see the House Republicans, and specifically House Speaker Mike Johnson, headed as we appear on the verge of a government shutdown? The establishment types in Washington are saying that that Johnson should fall on his sword. What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think that clearly Speaker Johnson does not have the personal problems with. Uh, Congressman Gates that Speaker McCarthy had. And I also think that in these congressional parlor games, there is a great man of history uh, dynamic working, which is if there was no Matt Gates, there probably still would be a Speaker McCarthy. So I think the personal relationship and rapport does matter quite a bit. That all being said, I think there is a view uh, that Johnson has tied himself into so many knots that he is just uh, kind of not saying anything anymore. These statements are getting more Baroque and less coherent uh, by the week. He's a little bit like the Dana Carvey character playing George H.W. Bush announcing no new taxes. He just, or that he is going to raise taxes. He just kind of doesn't want to say uh, that he is or isn't going to do Ukraine aid, for instance, or a, a whole planopy of things that could uh, revolt his base. I do think the safe bet is that he makes it uh, through the election. Um, I think they went through a million ballots at the conclave the first time to get to to, to get to Johnson. Um, but I do think Johnson's in way choppier waters than he's been before. Kurt, I can't resist asking you one final, final question, not about the future of American conservatism, but about the future of the American conservative magazine, which has had a long and ex involved and extremely fascinating history, beginning with its opposition to the second Iraq war when it was founded by Scott McConnell, Pat Buchanan and Taki. What's your vision for the American conservative now? 
For sure. Look, I want to build on the founding legacy, but not rest on it. Um, it's one thing to remind everybody that we were right uh, 22 years ago. It's another thing for that to be the only thing that we are doing. I think that TAC is well positioned to be in the position that uh, the New Republic, which you worked at, uh, was in the during the Clinton years, that the weekly standard was in during the George W. Bush White House, that the Atlantic arguably was during the Obama years, um, and that nobody really properly served during the first Trump administration. If there is a second uh, Trump administration or future conservative administration in the 2020s, um, we need to be the premier magazine of the right and actually, you know, not just talk about it, uh, but hit the ball straight down the fairway. There you have it, folks. Kurt Mills is predicting that if Donald Trump is elected, the American conservative will become, as the New Republic was called during the Clinton years, the official magazine of Air Force One. Kurt, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Jacob.